Hey, Pour It Out family, it's Ben and Jody Hughes. Always so great to be with you. There is a window open for revival right now, and it's time to strike the ground again. Today, you're going to be fired up and stirred up that God is moving. Are you ready? I'm not sure if you are. Here we go. Pour, Pour it, it out. out. Hey, good day, Pour It Out family. Welcome to Pour It Out with Ben and Jody Hughes. We're so excited to be with you today. I'm the Ben part. This is Jody. Good day. We're so excited to be with you and to be talking about one of our absolute favorite things to talk about. We're talking yeah. about revival today, but specifically about contending for revival, about striking the ground again to see revival break out in our families, in our churches, in our cities, region, nation, yeah. right? And I want to start by saying this to you. When we pray prayers for revival, Yes. When we pray prayers for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, for awakening, for Him to move yes. in our nation, in our city, in our churches, we pray prayers that God has answered many times before. Yeah. All through history, if you become a, a student of revival, if you study revival, you will see that almost without exception, Every time there's been a significant move of God, it's been prefaced by a group of people, hungry yeah. people. And you know what? Often a small group. Sure, sometimes it's a bigger group, but often there's been a small group of people who have just been hungry for God to move and they've gone after Him in prayer. Yeah, it's powerful and it should encourage us all because what we're pressing in for, exactly what Ben is saying, has happened before, it's breaking out now and we will see it again. Come on, you know, one of the most famous examples of this is the Hebrides revival, right? And Peggy and Christine Smith, Two sisters, they were 84 and 82, I believe. And I, th I think they were even blind, right? 84 years old and 82 yeah. years old. And they were praying for revival. Now, I want to encourage you. If you're in your 80s, you're in your 90s, God is not done with you yet. And just like these ladies here, even in their 80s, they prayed in a move of God that literally touched the, it touched the nation, yeah. but it touched the nations, wow. right? And inspires and stirs us even still today. Wow. You know what they prayed? They just, you know, it says that they, they just held on to God. They held on to this promise. Um, it was from Isaiah 44, 3 in the New King James. It says this, it says, For I will pour water on him who is thirsty yeah. and floods on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit on your descendants and my blessing on your offspring. What an amazing verse. And in the Hebrides, that's what they held on to. And it says that often they prayed from like 10 a.m. up 10 p.m. at night all the way through to four o'clock in the morning. Wow. Right. Just going after God, they would just pray and they said, God, this is what your word says. And we're going to just keep on striking the ground. We're going to keep on crying out, knowing yeah. that there is a promise right here in the word of God. I will pour water on him who is thirsty. Wow. I love the verse, uh, Psalm 85, 6, and it says this, will you not revive us again? Some translations say revive us again. But what I love about that is it says revive us again, which means that what has happened before, the Bible's even saying, cry out and say, let it happen again. And so anyone who's like, we can't cry out for revival again. It says it right here. Psalm 85, 6, revive us again. There is a declaration to lean into right now. In fact, cry out right now. Revive us again. Come That's on. the word of God. It's biblical. And we need to pray that prayer over and over and over again. Amen. Come on. I remember in the middle, it was just a few weeks into the pineapple revival, and we've talked about it many times, but you know, we hosted a revival in our church in Australia called the Pineapple Revival. And we were a few weeks in, and I remember a pastor, friend of mine, he came and visited, and, and he came up to me and he said, Ben, this is what you've been praying for. Yeah. And I was like, yes, 
Yes, it is. You know what? When we pray for revival, we go after him. God shows up. God shows up. And I want you just to hear that if you hear nothing else, right? God promises, like I already said, Isaiah 44, 3, he'll pour water on him who is thirsty, floods on the dry ground. He will pour out his spirit on your descendants. This is like on your kids and blessing on your offspring. So guys, I'm confident that you can have revival, that we can have revival, and we are in the midst of the beginnings of revival already here in America and in the nations. You know what? We're seeing such a hunger for God and all over people are beginning to really cry out, to really press in for a move of God and God is answering. Yeah, absolutely. We say often at the moment that the harvest is not just ripe, it's desperate because everywhere we go, we go, we are seeing an ease of people coming into connection with Jesus, saying yes to salvation. Everywhere we go, whether that be online through media or in person in the streets or in person in churches, I want to tell you something, the season has shifted. And if we don't learn to understand that the season has changed, there's been a recalibration in people's hearts. We can miss the Kairos moment that, got, that we are in right now where people's hearts are open. They want God, whether they can put words to it or not. And there is an ease of salvation right now. And not only that, there is a desperation in the cry of the people for revival. There is a natural cry coming out of people right now. Revive us again. Revive us again. Revive us again. I want to tell you something. I want to, uh, can, I want to speak this over you right now. This is a moment not to miss. We are in the beginnings of a mighty move of God. Wow. So we know that for the Hebrides revival, two ladies in their 80s were given the credit for really praying in that yeah. move of God that, that shook an entire region. One of the most powerful moves of God. The Welsh revival, right? Another world famous move of God that literally shook a nation. So guys, you know what? We can pray for revival for God to shake a nation because God's done it many times before. But one observer, he said this, says, if it be asked why the fire of God fell on Wales, the answer is simple. Fire falls where it's likely to catch and spread. Ah. And as one has said, Wales provided the necessary tinder. Here were thousands of believers unknown to each other in small towns and villages and great cities crying to God day after day for the fire of God to fall. Wow. This was not merely a little talk with Jesus, but daily agonizing intercession. You know what? When we get desperate for God, yeah. when we get desperate for Him to move, when we're in that place of, of dryness, like we've been talking about there from Isaiah 44, 3, I pour out my water on him as, who is thirsty. When we get to that place of thirst and nothing else will do, and we begin to say, God, we must have you. We must have yeah. revival. Huh. We must have a move of God in our church. We must have a move of God in our nation. I want to tell you, God shows up. Yeah. Why can I tell you that with great confidence? Because we have seen that happen yeah. ourselves. We've seen that happen. You know, for with the pineapple revival, God sent us, um, we were in America at the time, God sent us back to Australia and He said, I want you to build a house to host revival, to host my presence. And so for three and a half years, we contended for revival. We went after His presence. We went after a move of God in our city. Every time we came together for a prayer meeting, we'd pray for revival. We'd pray for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We'd pray for notable miracles to break out, that people would encounter Jesus. And we did this week in, week out. Every time we came together to worship, right? We would strike the ground in worship. We'd sing, let it rain, but we're not, we weren't coming from a place of, of just kind of just singing the song and going through emotion. No, we'd be praying, God, let it rain. We'd be decreeing it to the heavens. Let it rain. Pour out your spirit in our city, God. Yeah. Pour out your spirit in our region, God. We ask you for revival. Yeah. And I want to tell you, friends, three and a half years in that one place of doing this, God broke in, God broke through, and God broke in out. Yeah. God broke out. And that was a move of God now known as the pineapple revival, right? Which impacted and touched thousands of lives. And that's why when my, my friend came to me that day and he said, Hey, Ben, this is what you've been praying for. Yeah. I was like, yes, it is. Because you know what? God is the God who answers. Yeah. He is the God who answers. Yeah, absolutely. We both love the verse from Zechariah 10.1 that says, ask for rain, in a time of rain. 
And we're in a time of awakening. We're in a time of revival. We're in a time of change. And so there's a responsibility to steward this season on all of us right now. And our responsibility to steward it means we look and we see what's actually going on. And we say, God, we're going to see revival. And God, we're going to strike the ground again. And God, we're not going to give up until not just small moves of God are breaking out, but a mighty, unprecedented wave of your spirit is flowing all across, not just our nation, but every nation. Amen. Because we look to the nations and we see what's going on and we're like, God, I'm not missing this moment. Right. You know, we've got to understand that we wrestle that there is a contending, that there is yeah. a place of going after yeah. revival. The enemy doesn't just kind of sit back and go, oh, come on, come on in, have revival. Yeah. In Ephesians 6, Paul tells us we wrestle, yeah. not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of this dark age, in our cities, in our nations, in our, in our even local towns, right? We have enemy strongholds, spiritual forces, demonic powers, right? That we wrestle against. But I want to tell you, friends, if we fight, we win. Yeah. If we fight, we win. Jesus has taken the victory and we've been given armor. We've been given weapons. We've been given the sword of the spirit to decree like this, like Isaiah 44, 3. We pull out that sword, right? Which we love to just teach you how to do. We pull out that sword of Isaiah 44, 3 and we pray and we declare. We say, God, you said I will pour water on him who is thirsty and floods on the dry ground. And so, God, we thank you for yeah. that water being Come poured on. out right now yeah. over you over your church, over your city, over your nation. Come yeah. and do it, God. Come and do it like you promised. Floods on the dry ground. God, you said, I will pour my spirit on your descendants, on your kids, blessing on your offspring. Come on. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Pour it out, Lord. Pour it out, Lord. Pour it out, Lord. Sure. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, I'm demonstrating, sure. but I'm also praying it at the same time over you. This is how you pray, guys. You yeah. come together. The Bible promises us, Jesus said, if you ask, you will receive. If you seek, you will find. If you knock, the door will be opened. He is the pearl of great price. And when we're hungry for him and we go after him, we diligently seek him. He shows up. Wow. I can feel him showing up right yeah, now. Wow, there's more to come. We'll be right back. It's so great to be with you, Pour It Out family, as today we are contending and we are striking the ground for revival. We're striking the ground for you. We're striking the ground for your circumstances and we're striking the ground for our nations, amen. And we are believing again for a mighty move of God, unprecedented, greater than anything we've seen before. You know what? I keep hearing on the media, on the news that everything's unprecedented. Everything's never been seen before. Well, I want to prophesy something right now. We're in a season where the word unprecedented won't explain and won't even begin to describe what unprecedented means because we're about to enter into a move of God that nobody has ever seen before, that nobody's ever experienced the weight and the wonder of what God's about to pour out. And I tell you what, the media is not going to have a word for it. You're not going to have a word for it because God is going to move. He is going to move and he is going to win the billions into his heart, into the kingdom. Amen. And I want to speak hope over you, friend, that we are in a Kairos moment. We are in an open window season for revival. And I want to make this clear. Revival is already breaking out in many places. Revival is breaking out in many people. Revival can be defined as hearts on fire for Jesus. Let's not get overcomplicated here. But revival is about souls and revival is about destiny and revival is about nations. 
And so we need revival like we've never needed it before because we're in a season where the solutions can't come from people. They can only come from God. And so there's a desperation that needs to come from the inner parts of each and every one of God's people right now to say we must have a move of God in our nation. We must have a move of God in our own homes, right? And there's a level of desperation that God's looking for. I must read you this story from 2 Kings 13. It has so impacted me in this season and put a fire in my belly to strike the ground again. It's the story of where Elisha went to a king. 2 Kings 13. Elisha, the prophet, he's talking to a king. And essentially what's going on, you can read this some other time. Essentially what's going on is that the king is saying, I'm in a battle that's too big for me. I'm in a battle that we're going to not survive. I'm in a battle that I don't have solutions for. And I'm in a battle, I don't have enough soldiers, we're doomed. Kind of relates to how some of us are feeling in our life and in our nations lately. And the word of God through the prophet Elisha came to him. And the word of God was, take a bow and an arrow in your hand. These are weapons of war. Take the weapons of war in your hand and open up a window. And the word of the Lord, the prophet was essentially saying, open up that window. There's an open window right now for a move of God. Open up that window. And then he handed in the arrows and he said, shoot the Lord's arrow of victory out the open window. Now the Lord even said, the word of the Lord was, it's the Lord's arrow of victory. There is a word of victory and revival right now in this open window season, but we have to shoot it out. And then the the prophet said to the king, he said, take these arrows and strike the ground. Now, as we know, it's one of those stories where the king, who was in a battle fighting for his life, fighting for his nation, but the king took the arrows and he heard the word of the Lord say, strike the ground, but he only struck the ground three times. Now, when you read this story, you will discover that the prophet never told him how many times to strike. He just said, take the Lord's arrow of victory and strike. And that's why the prophet got upset with him. And he said, you're going to get a victory, but it's only a partial victory because you could have struck the ground again and again and again and again, and you could have seen the entire battle won. Well, here's the word of the Lord for us, friends. We are in an open window season for revival in our nations right now. And the Lord is saying to us, take the Lord's arrow of victory and don't quit and don't stop and don't be satisfied. Yes, there's revival breaking out all over the nations, right? There are are pockets of revival. There are incredible things going on right now, but let's not be satisfied with that because we need an unprecedented weighty move of the the glory in our nations. Amen. We need every person encountering salvation and deliverance and freedom and knowing that there is an eternity for them in heaven. Let's not stop, friends. The Lord is saying to each one of us right now, strike the ground again. Let go of disappointments, friend. If you have disappointments from a past move of God, let go of them. Drop them to the ground. If you have offenses and unforgivenesses in your heart, friend, drop them. Let go of them. Let them go to the ground. If you have stuff in your heart that's against revival today, drop it. Let it go to the ground because we're fighting for the lives of people, friend. We're fighting for the salvation of people and our nations. We're fighting for our children. We're fighting for generations to come. And we are in an open window season right now. And I don't know about you, but I do not want to miss this moment. I want to read about this. I want heaven to read about the people that rose up in this season and said, we're not stopping and we're not going to quit after three strikings the ground. We're going to strike the ground and strike the ground and strike the ground. And we're not giving up hope and we're not stop contending. And we're believing for an all out unprecedented move of God in our nations. Amen. Wow, I can feel the fire in here today. And if you're not inspired, you're not encouraged, I mean, just to keep on striking, keep on contending, I want you to be encouraged right now. This is straight out of the Word of God. If we contend, if we fight, we will win. We're not fighting to maybe win. We got the victory. Jesus has won the victory, but we still need to show up. We still need to fight. We still need to ask. We still need to contend. Amen. But if we do, we win. Yeah, absolutely. And revival starts in our own heart. So we say, God, 
revive us again. Revive us again. Put your hands out, friend. If that's your cry right now, say, God, revive me again. Refresh me again. Stir up the fires in my own heart, Father. Stir up a first love encounter in my own heart today, Jesus. I wanna pray right now for your family. There are so many of you who have children with uh, debilitating disease or addictions or stuff, or they need to come back into salvation. Family members, I cry out for your family members right now. And I say, Jesus, move in their life, move in their hearts, move in their home. Stir up a hunger after you, Jesus. We call them into the kingdom, we call them into salvation. We call them into destiny, Father. I break addictions. I break hopelessness. I break every lie of the enemy. And we call them in to walk the days that they were born to walk. Father, right now, I want to pray for your home. Right now, I decree peace and revival breaking out in your own home. We mark your home right now for a move of God that your home would be known as an Obed Edom, a place where the presence of God abides. And would you join me right now? I want to pray for our nations just right now. Put out your hands and we're going to cry out together. We're going to cry out for revival. Ben, you can jump in at any time right now. Father, we cry out for a move of God right now. Father, you said ask for rain in a time of rain. Well, it's a time of rain. It's a time of revival. So we cry out right now and we say we see that small cloud. But God, we're asking you for the thundering revival rain clouds right now over our nations. And we thank you for not just the ones and twos and not just the hundreds and the thousands, Jesus. but the tens of thousands and the tens of thousands of thousands of thousands, Father, coming into your kingdom. We cry out for our own nation, our own cities, Father, do a work of transforming revival fire, Lord. We say thank you for every move of God that has been before, but God, we're still hungry. We must have a move of God in our nation, Father, and we thank you that you are the God of breakthrough, that you are the God of the pent-up flood, and you are poor pouring out revival in this season, Father. And we say right now, put a fire in our hearts, God. Put a fire in our hearts, God, that we won't quit and we won't stop because we're crying out until we see the fire breaking out across our nations. (sighs) Jesus, you are our King. Say this with me. The name of Jesus is higher. The name of Jesus is higher. The name of Jesus is higher. And we thank you right now that your name, your name is placed and reigning over our nations, Father. Jesus. Wow. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sure. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. (laughs) Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Pour it out, God. Yeah. Pour it out. Pour oil on that fire. Man, I can feel that. You can feel it, right? You can feel that fire that's burning. I want to tell you, I want to encourage you. Lean in like this. Yeah. Just go for it. You don't, you might not be as loud as Jody, but I want to tell you, you can be passionate. You can go for it. Just begin to lift your voice. Yes. Lift up your voice. Pray these prayers. Zechariah chapter 10, as Jody's already shared, says, ask for rain in the time of the rain. Let's not be caught out like only striking the ground gently these, these three times. Let's really go for it. Let's press in. Yeah. You know, the community that we're a part of, you know, we've been praying for, for day after day after day for revival. Yeah. You know, we've had seasons in our lives where we've done that for day after day, week after week, month after month. And I want to tell you, we've seen revival break out sure. as a result of it. So guys, today, we're not telling you something that we haven't experienced. We're encouraging you because we have experienced it. We've seen it. And like we begun today's show with, when we pray prayers for revival, we pray prayers that God has answered many times before and He is doing it again right now, right now. Friend, I want to give you an invitation. You know why we're praying for revival? Because we want people to encounter Jesus. And I want to invite you to encounter Him right now. If you've never given Him your life, If you've never said, Jesus, I surrender to you. I believe what you did on the cross. I believe you died on the cross and that you you raised from the dead. And I want to accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Right now, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say it out loud. Wherever you are, say this with me right now. Just say, Jesus, 
I call on your name. Yeah, Jesus. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Yeah. Please forgive me for my sin. Yeah. I receive your forgiveness. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Yeah. And fill me with your Holy Spirit. Baptize me in your Holy Spirit and fire today. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Wow. Amen. Huh. Father, I pray for every person. I pray for you right now, my friend, watching. Whether you just said yes to Jesus or you're already a believer, you're filled with the Holy Spirit. I ask for that fresh oil yeah. of His presence to be poured out wow. over you today. You know, our ministry is called Pour It Out Ministries because God gave us a mandate to pour yeah. out oil. Yeah. And so that's what we're doing. That's why we're here, right? And yeah. so even now, even yeah. now, we just want to pray for you. Yes. We want to pray that that fresh oil of His presence yeah. is poured out over you today, that you would be filled with that oil. Just like David said in Psalm 23, God, you anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows, overflows. And we know that for there to be overflow, there has to be continual pouring in and pouring out. The key to fire is pouring oil on the fire. The key to revival is personal revival. So we release the oil of His yes. presence on the fires of your heart today and on your church and on your nation. Here we go. Well, we want to release it over you right now. You ready? Here we go. Pour it out.